Sharma, the founder of SK Associates and Group, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to Conference 3.4, where we'll explore the topic health in the workplace strategies for success. We are honored to have a panel of accomplished CEOs, founders, co-founders, industry leaders, startup mentors, and academicians as our guest speakers today. By the end of this conference, we hope you will gain some valuable insights into this crucial area. Hello everyone, I'm Anjali Singh, the Head of Strategic Partnerships at SK Associates Group, and it's my pleasure to co-host this conference with Shabin. So before we delve into our topic today, let me briefly introduce SK Associates and Group. We are an ISO certified management consulting firm registered under the MSMD Act 2006 with the Government of India. Our total mission is to provide consulting services to student entrepreneurs globally covering areas such as compliance, operations, marketing, research and development, human capital, strategy and operations. Our passion lies in helping budding entrepreneurs bring their dreams to life and contribute to global economic at SK Associates and Group, we take pride in offering tailor-made solutions to our clients. Our team of transformational consultants has a deep-rooted passion for entrepreneurship and they bring extensive experience and expertise to every project. Over the past three years, we have built a network of 5,000 individuals from 30-plus countries, representing diverse universities, industries, and functional roles. Our ultimate goal is to assess 600 million students across the world by providing pro bono consulting services in areas such as strategy, operations, human capital, compliance, legal advisory, R&D, taxation, marketing, and many others. We also plan to invest 500 crores USD in their startups by 2035, creating more than 5,000 plus employment opportunities for startup experts, advisors, mentors, and resource scholars. Our vision is to contribute to global economic growth by empowering the next generation of iconic organizations. Collaboration and strategic alliances are key to achieving our mission. We are committed to promoting entrepreneurship development and community impact with a focus on empowering students for global economic growth. We aim to partner with over 1,000 plus universities and colleges by 2030, providing guidance and mentorship to students as they embark on their startup journeys. The enthusiasm and interest, Anjali, we see among students today for entrepreneurship is truly inspired. That have the potential to address critical, social, economical and geopolitical challenges through innovative business models. By promoting sustainable entrepreneurship, we can drive positive change and create a brighter future for all. Entrepreneurs not only generate job opportunities, but they also stimulate economic growth, offer innovative solutions to consumer and foster collaborations with other businesses. We have witnessed remarkable success stories where entrepreneurs have tackled issues like climate change, waste management, education and many more. Absolutely. Entrepreneurship is a catalyst for change and innovation. It's a powerful force that can reshape industries, transform lives, and make the world a better place. We are committed to supporting student entrepreneurs on their journey, equipping them with the tools, knowledge, and networks they need to succeed. At SK Association Group, we are immensely grateful for the dedicated support of our executive management team, including Ms. Anjali Singh, who has obviously led multiple of our campaigns, successfully helping us collaborate with multiple stakeholders on the ground. Ms. Vaishali Shri, and her team who have been hiring and recruiting continuously and consistently for us from the last three months and i'm also thankful to her for bearing patiently throughout this period miss aditi jain obviously she has been leading collaborations again miss anjali kumari the head of our compliance and incorporation team and mr fess siddiqui who's still on the back end hosting our conference their unwavering commitment has played a pivotal role in our growth and development Thanks to their dedication, we can make a meaningful impact on the entrepreneurial ecosystem by not just inspiring, educating, and mentoring young individuals, also encouraging them to pursue entrepreneurship instead of a corporate career. So again, we are in the Generation Z mode in the early 2000s or the mid 2000s, you could say, wherein we are always looking for new modes of employment and new things we can do, new challenges we can face. And this is the point where actually I think, and we all do think, that entrepreneurship can actually bring out a social change by helping us realize the purpose we are made for and by achieving the purpose that we want to achieve in our life. So that's the thing that ultimately gives us satisfaction, not a corporate carrier with a 12 LPA CTC or maybe a 30 LPA CTC. So now before we delve into our discussions, let's take a moment to introduce our esteemed lineup of guest speakers and tap into the wealth of wisdom they bring to the table. 
Our first speak of the day is Ms. Sulba Rai, the Chief People Officer at Renewbuy, an insurtech company. With 17 years of experience in human capital, Ms. Rai excels in strategic HR interventions to drive business optimization. Her expertise in designing sophisticated processes and enhancing organizational and people capabilities, coupled with her global perspective and strong networking skills, make her a remarkable leader. She has previously worked at EY and founded People Matrix, an HR consulting firm, holding a BE in electronics and communications and an M- MBA in HR and finance. Ms. Raya share, will share her invaluable insights and experiences with her today. Our second speaker for today is none other than Mr. Florin, the founder of Smil and several other successful ventures. At Wetflow Consulting, he has strategically partnered with over 150 companies, including notable names like WeTransfer and Zenzor, helping them expand across Europe. Smlin focuses on creating positive workplaces and unites purpose-driven founders, offering a support network and a resource hub to inspire and activate them. Next up, we have Mr. Lasinta Ferdinando, the Managing Director of JKSE Consultants Private Limited, who brings 34 years of business acumen to our conference. With extensive experience in development and commercial banking, he has successfully turned around and scaled up to 20 companies across various sectors, and his expertise in delivering large IP products for the Sri Lankan banking sector is commendable. Holding fellowships from the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants UK and the Banco Institute of Sri Lanka, along with multiple advanced degrees, he will share his deep insights and experiences with us. Our final speaker for today is none other than Ms. Precious a seasoned founder and director with a rich background in non-profit and profit organization management. With skills in business planning, event management, fundraising, and she runs intensive business accelerator sessions in a SJEC region. Ms. Precious is also an author and a speaker and her company Vessels of Virtue publishes a magazine and hosts online talk shows to empower entrepreneurs. Holding a degree in entrepreneurship from UNISA South Africa, and having completed courses at GIBS and Invested, Precious is here to share her experiences with us. So welcome everyone and it's an honor to have you all with us. Your expertise adds a special dimension to our conference, making it a unique and insightful gathering. Now before we begin this conference, we would like to request all of you to kindly switch on your website webcams and participate actively in the polls that will be conducted in the chat box throughout the conference by our HR team. We do encourage active participation from your side and we believe, we strongly believe that interaction is always a two ways process. It just can't go from this side. It has to come from that side too. Okay. Let's move ahead then. Moving ahead, I would like to invite our first speaker for today, Ms. Shilba Ray, and request her to commence her speech. All right. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity and it is nice to connect uh, with everyone. Uh, the topic uh, that has been, uh, you know, chosen of health and wellness at workplace, I think uh, while uh, some organizations were doing a uh, few things uh, earlier and was part of their agenda, but I think post-COVID, um, this really took uh, another level and, and has gained tremendous momentum. And it is heartening to see that organizations uh, take in interest in the well-being of employees because at the end of the day it is not just about uh, the HR, the human resource, but it, it, at the end of the day it's people who make any organization, right? And um, there are many studies, many statistics which talk about how uh, a well-engaged, healthy and a happy workforce contributes uh, to the success of the organization. There has been uh, direct correlation with engagement and financial performance of the organization. Uh, so, you know, it is um, a, literally a no brainer uh, when it comes to investing in people and looking after them because they are the ones who are driving the growth of the organization. Um, if you have to talk about the strategies to drive uh, the health and wellness uh, at workplace, there are many. And um, I would also uh, like to say that one bill doesn't fit all. So whatever we discuss uh, may not necessarily, you know, be the right answer to the uh, things that you would want to uh, institutionalize at your workplace. It all starts from listening to your people. 
right what do they want what do they perceive as uh you know health and wellness uh you know initiatives or the support uh, they require at workplace uh so until unless you hear their voices uh and you want to create something uh it may not give you the optimum results so um, the organizations need to know what they are creating for whom they are creating and most importantly the why of it why would they want to do it right uh and once you have understood the needs of your people and why you are going to do something that then comes the overall uh planning creating strategizing and the most crucial element is all about execution no matter how great a strategy if not executed well will not deliver the result, uh, right results so uh once we understand the voice of the people uh the important strategy is to involve the leadership until and unless uh people at the top you know take that assume that as their uh, you know important responsibility at workplace it is very difficult to drive a change drive a culture of uh, employee wellness so you know leaders not only promoting um openly talking but should also be participating in any kind of you know uh, wellness initiatives because that then becomes literally like a norm and it doesn't become like a tick box uh, exercise for the organizations so that's um, you know extremely important um and when we talk about um, the health and wellness at workplace i think it should be holistic um one cannot have a part uh, of of focusing only on health or only uh, on physical well-being i think there are many facets uh, to wellness and um, the approach uh, for both adaptation um and uh, overall you know involvement uh, requires it to be a very very holistic uh, there are people uh, who need a lot of uh, support uh, you know work uh, at workplace i think something that continues to uh, be a challenge is different kind of stresses that at work you know it could be a timeline stress it could be um, you know optimization stress it could be a top line you know there can be various dimensions to it i think um, helping employees um, manage that uh, because it is something that's going to stay but how do you respond is extremely important uh, and if organization can focus on those areas uh, that's very uh, you know that will deliver the right results uh, to you know in, ensure the employee wellness so different facets being being in mental wellness physical wellness nutrition um you know uh, and even and it it doesn't need to be confined to these i think a lot of times it is also about creating an environment at workplace where employees are able to openly discuss um uh, you know their challenges or uh, the things that affect them i think creating that environment of open honest communication itself you know uh, resonates with the employee wellness because you're putting the employee at the center of the focus and you are trying to understand um their needs uh, their uh, challenges and then responding to those so um you know creating various levels and layers of uh, you know communication uh, is extremely important and goes a long way in creating the safety net for the uh, employees both psychological and physical safety so i mean just to give an example um the way we drive at our organization apart from uh you know the entire uh, year uh, you know various uh, things that we do uh, and and we have a very holistic uh, way of uh, driving wellness at workplace we also ensure that there are multiple platforms where employees can um express themselves um you know and we have even created a platform um and it's the ai enabled platform because our workforce is also very distributed they are spread across more than 150 uh, cities and towns of the country uh, and not necessarily operating from an office environment so they may not have their colleagues who must who, with whom they must be interacting on a daily basis 
there is a platform where they can you know speak and that platform allows them to in fact interact directly with me also so you know if somebody wants to message me uh, that is also possible and you know that is something that yeah, is is part of my important uh, day to look at those messages and ensure that they are responded um again um, other than that is um, while they while we do a lot of you know uh, and, and one of the culture of the organization is open door and where people can freely openly come and meet uh, pick up the phone and speak um but there are various levels and layers that we have created and initiatives where people can come and share the feedback so there is lots of one on ones happening lot of group meetings happening where you know we get to know and sense uh, and help that create uh, the safety net for the employees um another thing that uh, has really worked is while there is something uh, at office or within the office environment that we provide uh, we have also uh, realized that sometimes uh, you know when when people come at work they come as whole right you cannot say that you please segregate your personal life and this is your professional life you are a whole who is coming and bringing value to the organization and sometimes there could be challenges for employees at a personal level and how do you help them uh, you know uh, manage those and respond to those challenges because uh, it does impact them uh, so we have you know again created a channel where people can just go and speak to the experts and share their personal issues and organization is just not interested in knowing what they are talking and it's a completely confidential platform that is created and the whole idea is that we are supporting the employees at all levels so uh, you know and and they are experts because you know i i still remember when uh, we were going through the unfortunate phase of uh, covid and uh, there were a lot of challenges where people were unfortunately losing you know their near and dear ones and handling grief itself is is a very challenging uh, thing and it's not an easy thing and a lot of times we as hr while we may do some kind of you know the counseling and provide the support but we are really not really the grief uh, you know uh, ma- uh, we are not the ones who are expert in managing uh, grief so that's where you know these experts come into play and uh, they are the ones who are you know the they have the right approach they help and they uh, literally uh, walk the path with the employees and help them come over it and there can be so many uh, you know examples that i you know where people want to engage uh, the whole idea is that because we're talking about the workplace uh, for us um, and in fact at renew by one of our values is people orientation so it all starts with the people and that's very important that we live that value um and um, you know so just three four things hear the voice if i have to summarize uh in terms of the strategies it is hear the voice of the people what do they really want uh second is have the leadership in involved in all the initiatives because it has to be toned from the top it has to be normalized it has to be created a part of the culture uh third is have a holistic approach you can't just have just few ticks have a holistic approach different people will have different needs and that all of those need to be catered for and fourth is have multiple channels uh, and not just one uh, way where you are listening to your people and addressing their needs i think that would be all from my end i see somebody raising the hand if they have any question happy to uh, answer i'm sorry i'm not able to hear anyone um, yeah. just want to check if i'm audible <laughs> okay anyone who has questions may raise your hands yeah tejashree nagarred bhi has question yeah teju Oh uh, well, uh, basically it just got a mistake. Uh, uh, but yeah, I've heard the entire uh, speech of yours, uh, Ma'am Shilba. It was, yeah, it was true that uh, after COVID, it has complete like most of the people lives have got changed, 
and uh, even i'm doing internships and i've been facing the organizations pre covid and post covid culture has totally changed and i think uh, most of the companies have already inculcated the ideology and strategies which you have mentioned over here and yeah it's been uh, it's, it's a good change and uh, yeah i think uh, if we go like this we can go for high i don't have any kind of question uh, it's just a comment but yeah thanks for that thanks thanks you Kostuban Srivasan has a question at the yeah i had a, thanks uh, for your speech that was really good uh, i just had a question that uh, you know i have worked for many organizations but this health and wellness is it a deliverable of the ceo or is it the deliverable for the hr what would be your views on that <laughs> it is the core responsibility uh, that's how i would like to put uh, shrivatsan it can't be the moment uh, you uh, just park it at one department then you are trying to send the message no this is not my job this is only hr's job and that can't really happen uh, everyone has a role to play uh, in building the culture of care uh, inclusivity uh, and hence i believe that it cannot be just a person or a department's uh, role it has to be um, supported and co held uh, with all the leaders of the organization because um you know there are people in all the departments and everyone needs to be taken care of so now question for in the chat box shubha if you can just have a look at it about the polls question however uh which of the following uh as a ceo how do you instill mental health awareness uh, welfare prioritization in your organization among your teams um so um lehri naidu um the way we try to instill uh, in our organization is a lot of communication uh, a lot of uh, you know uh, uh, events and and uh, uh, you know partic invoking participation that's how we try to uh, do it because um, this is not like for us one of activity it is something and there are uh, within the organization we have built multiple platforms so it is always important that people are continuously made aware you know if you if you want you can you know go to this channel or seek help so something that we are trying to do that and um, as part of a culture also when you talk about mental health welfare it it includes lot of facets it's just not about just the initiatives or just the sessions etc it is also about the kind of culture that you're creating so um, you know lot of times uh, you know people more than anyone else employees are interacting with their managers so the manager sensitization is extremely important um and that's where we spend a lot of time uh, communicating with the managers sensitizing them training them to be uh, not only better at their work the, the technical work that do, they do but also how do they manage people because ultimately it's the work uh, conversations that also kind of uh creates lot of stress and and can be one of the you know the reason of uh, you know mental health uh, so um conversations uh making it uh, priority for everyone like i said our values is people orientation so ensuring that it is lived and breathed by everyone so that's really something that we try to do that's an excellent response shubham I just have a question for you. Would you like to elaborate on what does Renew by Indu from the human resources aspect and perspective of this? Just repeat it. Uh, I think I'm. Uh, Would you like to elaborate what Renew by Indu does from a human resource perspective? Oh, what we do as a human resource, uh, I mean, lots of stuff. Uh, I don't know. I'll I'll take a lot of your air time if I start talking. Um, but uh, I think the way uh, we look at. Uh, uh, people here so for us it's not just about human resource for me it is all about people and uh, anything that we try uh, we achieve or we deliver is is through our people and one of the things that i constantly say it may uh, you know sound like a repeat telecast is that no matter how much ai comes it will always be people who will be driving that ai right so um 
the human connect doesn't go and the interventions that you spoke about um, what we do at renew by i think um, you know no matter how cliche sounds the entire life cycle but i think the way we differentiate um, when it comes to uh, people is um, giving them the great experience uh, that's that's uh, what uh, we always end up and it's not about doing it the traditional way uh, you know it is all about um, giving them more customized flavor and uh, since um, you know there is lot of uh, interactions and there is lot of connect that we have been able to build i think that really differentiates um, the way we bring the, uh, the people experience to our uh, employees um, so not only uh, there are uh, things and and we use technology also so there is a beautiful amalgamation of human touch and technology where um we try to connect people at different levels um so there are uh, platforms for uh, conversations there are platform for development there are platform for daily engagement um there are platform for like i said wellness um so and there are constant conversations in person uh, so i think um, really to summarize the way we handle uh, things or we the way we drive the people agenda um i think one of the more, an interesting thing that we also do is um you know we try uh, to create a lot of alignment the organization and the people because that is also extremely important until and unless people know what the organization stands for what the organization is driving um uh, and then have the full commitment of the people um that is extremely important because uh, people do want to know what their efforts are ultimately going to result and how are they part of the large big picture no matter how small a jigsaw puzzle if even one piece is missing the the puzzle is not complete right so that alignment is extremely important and we drive that uh, very well we create a culture of performance so you know people understand what me why are we doing what we are doing and how we need to do so we emphasize a lot on the how part of it uh, so the hr initiatives are all about communication inclusion um you know support alignment uh, these are the key themes that we typically operate that was quite an interesting interaction with you shubha i'd like to request you anjali to take over from you yes thank you mr shubha that was a wonderful speech and i would request you to please share your email address in the chat box and if any audience Sure. Now moving ahead, I would request Mr. Lasanta to commence his speech. Good evening, good afternoon, uh, and good morning from wherever you are. And uh, I hope most are uh, from uh, Asia. So good evening. I have a small presentation. Let me share it with you. I I think a uh, whole lot of things were discussed before uh, and uh, I'll have to uh, now create uh, what I'm going to share with you uh, but having said that now uh, the earlier present uh, uh, spoke uh, most of things in a very structured organization so I'm going to uh, uh, touch upon areas where uh, I mean when you move from a structured organization going into a the family oriented business because the smes or the little bigger smes uh, still uh, controlled by families maybe public coded companies they basically uh, have a different structure altogether so in terms of uh, when you say workplace workplace can be defined the workplace for the employees and as well as the workplace for the entrepreneurs workplace for the investors so there are many dimensions you can speak about workplace and the mental health and the uh, well being so these are the four discussion points which i am not going to touch one by one but all in a mix now this image you will see here there are uh, circular small sockets but the red one is more of a triangular shape but you are trying to fit into a 
circular uh, socket, right? Now, these uh, area where some people forget in their careers or where they are working, uh, sometimes it is not what is meant for them. So then, uh, do you still stick with the organization or how do you uh, uh, build your own career? Uh, moving on, uh, as I said, the power of agency principle in public coded companies. Now, in a, in a public coded company, uh, basically. Uh, sorry to the, interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. I think the slides are not moving. Obviously, we can still see the moving. list. I'm sorry. Can you see it now? Not yet. Not yet. Is it good now? Yes. Right. So I'll not go to the full screen. Uh, so uh, I told you about these sockets where you become a bit of a misfit, right? So the, this is the other slide where I said the public quoted companies, the agency principle, because even the board of directors or the uh, senior managers or all are agents of the uh, shareholders because you are representing the shareholder interest versus when you move into a more of a family oriented or a, a not a listed company those are not transparent so uh, i think the previous uh, speaker spoke a lot about well-being but uh, let me uh, uh, differentiate a, a public quoted company versus a private company. Now say a uh, board of directors are predominantly agents of shareholders. Then you will have a very well-structured corporate entity. Then it has all the corporate branding which matters to market their products. So uh, having any uh, uh, conflicts or I mean, whistleblowing, I mean, if you don't have a proper whistleblowing strategy in place, uh, I mean, whatever happens negative towards a company, it will impact your brand image as well. Say, for an example, Nike, if they go and deploy uh, uh, subcontractors with uh, child labor, then their whole brand image will get impacted. So, uh, in, in terms of that kind of a... Uh, I mean, a, a force coming from the public, uh, you are bound to have your uh, proper strategies and the health related as, as the well being of the employees looked after. So, as I said, uh, uh, wider stakeholder interest in the company is visible in a larger public order company. The well defined culture, nurtured, suitable for the business, is concerned. Now, you'll have a well-defined value system as well because, I mean, as employees, now, this discussion, I'm taking more of an employee point of view, but uh, I being an entrepreneur, all most of this uh, health and well-being also matters for us because we also go through a lot of stress and then how do we uh, get over it? But then how we do things versus an employee, how they do things are totally different. In an employee, end of the day, you sell yourself for a number of hours. You're owned by the company, end of the day. So for that effort, you get remunerated. So as I said, the value system, right? Those value systems are totally different from industry to industry. Now, say uh, you take a IT-based industry, you will have a very loose culture where innovation is uh, inculcated and the dress code will be very informal and your ins and outs are not measured right so uh, then can you tolerate the same level of uh, culture 
in a well structured organization like say for an example a banking industry because they are like more robust right so can you allow them to walk in at any time and go out at any time and work late in the night no uh, but some of the back end operations yes now with covid and all that work from home has become a uh, norm uh, but then uh, when you really see a public audit company most of these things are like professionally looked at and uh, it's all tracked and taken care of and uh, the proper procedures how the uh, grievance handling is done but in, re in, in terms of family businesses sometimes what happens your value system is basically the predominant shareholder or the main powerhouse who will decide how the people should behave why i talk about this culture is now people as uh, i mean various various number of people come into organization it's a collection of people the people have their own self uh, interest and their value systems and the uh, where they are coming from, from the background they are from. But when you join you know, organization, you have to change that mark. Mind set so from the peer group or looking up to the bosses or to the chap whole. The last network is in right? Because now some sometimes the shareholder the direct. Am I what? Yeah, you are audible, Lasmita. Just that yeah. your voice is getting cut out in the mid. Of your speech, you can just check out your network once. Uh, I, yeah, I switched three networks. I have my okay, okay, you may continue. No issues. Uh, I think Mr. Lasanta has some network issues. We'll move ahead. Uh, once he comes back, we'll resume from here. Um, okay, I request Mr. Florin to commence his speech. You're talking on mute. Uh, we are unable to hear you. Yes. Good. Uh, good day. Good evening. Can you see my screen? 
Oh uh, yes, we can. Great. Okay. So hello from uh, Europe. I'm uh, dining in from Amsterdam today. Uh, my name is Florent. I'm going to share my story and a little bit more about Smile In. So first of all, I would like to welcome you to work. Welcome to the Reimagine Workplace. And I have two questions for you. So I'm going to give you 16 seconds to answer for yourself the first one. And the first one is what makes a good workplace culture? So at work, what makes a good culture in your company or in the company you're going to set up or in companies that you've worked before? I see that we have uh, already quite some uh, engaged uh, answers here, offering gym memberships, yes. Okay, what else could be? Right? I think that should be a free and open atmosphere. Yes, very good. So I give you my answer. Um, I think culture is like the air we breathe. So we just don't think about it most of the time. Um, but when it's just the air quality or the air quantity you breathe and that changes, you do notice. So this, the company culture is like this. You don't see it, but you can feel it the moment you step in and everyone that breathes the oxygen actually co-create the culture. It can be the CEO, the founder, but it can also be uh, the intern uh, or the cleaner. So everybody shapes the overall atmosphere of the company. So something that is really important is to feel it and not, not too much think about it, as Bruce Lee said. And I have another question for you, which is very important for this topic today. What made you smile? If you just look back at your day, what was the moment that you got like, ha, ah, this is cool, or somebody that touched your heart, or something that made you joy? Can you, you don't need to answer on the chat, but can you just reconnect for a second to that moment just uh, it could be this morning when you woke up and or you got a call from your mom or whatever it is but just reconnect to that moment and if you don't have any moment you can think about a specific place specific event that happened in your life where you felt a lot of joy and i would like you to basically close your eyes for a second and welcome that moment, that smile in yourself. So you smile in, you smile within. So where is it at the moment? If you can welcome it in yourself, I feel it in my mouth. I feel that my, the muscle around my mouth are actually expanding. I feel joy. And this is actually quite a pleasant um, experience. And I'm going to invite you to move that smile within yourself so we can actually move it in the eyes area and put it in the, in the third eye. So you just move it upward and see what happens. Can you expand on that smile? And once you have it there, just notice what's going on. And finally, we are just going to bring the smile. Now we're going to bring it down. So you go back to your mouth. And from the mouth, you go along your body, your mouth, you go down and you bring it to your heart. You can even put your hands on your heart. Can you feel your heart beating and the smile expanding too? Can you bring good energy to yourself? Okay, now you can open your eyes again. Welcome to Smiling. So I just wanted to give you a glimpse of what is uh, Smiling. So let's do uh, maybe a, a proper introduction. Um, my name is Laurent. I, lived in, I live in Amsterdam. I worked in eight countries between Singapore, 
some countries in Africa, the UK, Germany, Italy, France, and other places. And I always work with the super fast growing companies. So I was the first international partner of Zalando. It's the copycat of Zappos in Europe. That is the most successful e-commerce company right now in Europe. And I built uh, a lot of startups, uh, scale-ups <clears throat> across the European countries. Um, I even had a company of 20 people uh, focusing on that uh, niche, international expansion. And basically, I was just helping those companies to expand and also to build their culture in a very fast way within their company. So this sounds very good, but it also took a bit of a toll on me, and I'm going to explain to you. So a while ago, I almost lost my right eye. Um, I developed a very serious disease that created a blurred uh, vision uh, on my right eye. So I was walking and I was going to Zoom call with one eye like this. I had too much stress, too much screen time during the COVID time, and still I kept I kept going. As an entrepreneur, you you look at positive, you are positive, and you keep going, and then it got worse and worse and worse. And one day. Um, after I realized that my dog was running away from me because I was so much stressed, I said, okay, I have to change this. So I woke up and I said, okay, I'm going to pause everything. So I, I stopped, I switched up the laptops, put the phones away for weeks, and I went to the forest. And in this picture here, you see this is the first day. Uh, when I went to the to the forest, I'd say, I really felt I uh, didn't look good. I didn't feel good at all, but I just wanted to share this with you. Um, then I went to the to the forest <clears throat> and for every day I would walk for two, three hours with my dog. I did the Ayurveda treatment in the afternoon, some massage, slept a lot. I did literally nothing. I reflected, did not touch computer or the phones and step by step, day by day, week by week, I was healing my eye, getting better, coming back to myself. And I was kind of reversing the cycle. I was being reborn. I found time to do things that I love to do. So when I love basketball, so I went with my family-in-law to basketball games, and I was redefining in that period, it was very important for me, what is success? And success after this period for me is one, being healthy, Two, enjoying the time with my family. Three, have fun and joy. And four, doing projects that gives me energy. And then along that, that journey, I actually came across this book <clears throat> or this meditation called The Inner Smile. So it comes from the Taoism, um, ancient China, 4,500 years ago. And um, basically, I tried smiling in from within, inside myself, doing this every day, like we did at the beginning a little bit. I had no idea how it worked, but I felt better, better. I got more energy. And then when I closed that company out of 20 people that I had, this really, really helped me to go through this uh, experience and, uh, and the pain. So in a way, that was the smiling birth, because I felt like if you can do this when you have difficult times, and still keep your energy high, then if I can do this, many people can do this too. So as a founder, you know, when you are aligned with yourself and you find your purpose, people feel your energy. So I said, okay, how about doing this with a group of founders that are on the same energy? And why not spread it? What kind of uh, an impact could we have uh, to, to people? So I went to, from a um, high potential loss to an eye opener. Um, and basically, I even met a few weeks ago this gentleman that is now eight years old that teaches all around the world, Montag Chia. Um, and I downloaded ancient wisdom. Um, so to keep it simple, he says, well, some of the learnings that I got from him, Life is a balance. It's not good or bad. It's more yin and yang. I think you are all aware of this. But this chi, the life force that is everywhere, accessible anytime by anybody, 
the energy flows within you. So the head takes the most of the energy. The heart sends the energy to your head, to your head um, and receives a lot of energy and the belly stores your energy. And then eventually all the emotions that we come across throughout the day, where it's uh, being angry, being happy, uh, being sad and so on, everything is stored in your organs. So if you can clear your organs and actually take care of themselves, whereas you are at home or at work because it's the same organs, you can actually send good energy to yourself and then you will vibrate, you will resonate good energy. So now that we know that this energy is available, how can we create a more vibrant way of working? How can we bring more good vibes to the workplace? Instead of being more stressed and creating more burnout or having people that go to work and they don't want to go to work. So how do we reverse the cycle? So let's say you had a bad day at work. That happens to everyone. Um, <clears throat> Do you have a team that is that comes to you or a team member at the end of the day to yeah, mention something or give you a, I don't know, cup of, co cup of coffee or whatever it is that puts back a smile to your face and that you know what you're doing, what you do. Um, because when you're going to come to come home tonight, uh, do you feel kind of depleted that the workplace took all your energy or do you feel like, okay, I learned this and I learned that, and actually you spread the good energy to your home as well. So we believe at Smiling that this is so important to realign and to focus on good energies. Um, so yeah, I will just skip this one. But we realize that there's a major shift happening, at least in Europe and in some places all over the world. We're moving away from an old system to a new system. In the old system, we can see what's going on. In the new system, we don't see it yet, but we can feel it. We feel what is coming, but we don't know how to explain it and we don't know, we cannot see it. So it's really important to, to connect pioneers, people that are already in that old system that kind of feel something is going on, that we can build networks, form communities, nourish some ideas, exchange and grow to actually create a bit of a path to find a way to create that new system. And in this old system, it will collapse, it's gonna die, but we're gonna reuse some of it to make things better. So this is happening all over the world. And uh, the key is really to go from, uh, well, if I sum up is going from thinking to feeling, going from the head to the heart and the belly, going from the outside world to the inner world and going back to the outside world. Because if you connect the two, then that's where the magic happens. So there is um, <clears throat> one question that I always hear in companies. You hear it so many times. People are our biggest assets. People are our biggest resources. I always say, well, do you want to be a human resource or do you want to be a human being, right? Um, so for me, if that's really the case, then I'm always saying, okay, let's ask the people. Um, let's just ask, do you feel that you are important in your company? Do you feel that you are appreciated? Can you just be yourself? Can, is it a safe place to be and a good place to work? Um, and is there good vibes around you? So how about we stop being fake and actually had the authentic authenticity and the genuine part, especially this is so important for the Gen Z that is coming to the workplace right now. So with the Smiling Collective, we are a group of founders um, that come together and we bring not a certification or ISO certification or a label, but we bring a Smiling flag to companies that we recognize as being authentic, genuine, and that really put the feeling good at the center. So we came together a few weeks, months ago, and we built a manifesto of what we think is a smiling company that is really about good energy and being authentic and, and where you can create a safe place for people to, uh, to work and to be themselves. Um, and basically, if you want to become a smiling company, we have a, a good vibe scan. So you can um, just um, 
take it. It takes a couple of minutes. Um, then what we do is that we check with you. Um, <clears throat> What's uh, what's happening? Do you feel like you are a smart in organization as a founder, or as a leader of the company? And if it's a yes, then let's ask the people. Let's ask the team members. And basically what we do is we compare what your team is saying to you, your answers. And then if there's really alignment and good vibes in the organization, then you can become a smart in company. So I just want to give you an example of one that happened just a few days ago. So the founder answered, this is where the, the answers, this is where the team. So they are very, very aligned already with some, uh, some differences, obviously. But basically, based on this, we said, OK, well, this is definitely a smiling company. Um, and then um, we also gave a couple of recommendations to amplify this energy uh, within, within the workplace. Um, and how do we do that? we actually bring the smiling collective members. So founders of young companies that are already on that uh, track. And we bring, they, what they do is bring a wide range of, let's say, <clears throat> disciplines from the latest techniques in sports that uh, Max Verstappen is using before uh, starting his Grand Prix to energy, to understand what are the energy blockage within an organization to um, they say how to build a great culture, how to understand what is the well-being within the organizations, um, and how do you create a personal development development plan for your employee. So basically, we, we bring all those let's say different uh, companies together to um, to help the the workplace. So it, this stimulates and brings different senses to you inside yourself as an employee founder, but also inside the company. And it allows the conversation to be. And I just want to finish with the, with a, a small final quote. Um, so this is how we unlock your smiling power, so to say. And the final sentence that I would like to uh, leave with you is something from Chi Na Han, if I pronounce his name correctly. Sometimes your joy is the source of your smile, but sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. So what we need is a little bit more um, inner connection because this is how you find your joy. And that's basically what I wanted to share uh, with you today. And I don't know if there's time for questions or anything, but you can, uh, uh, if there won't be any time, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn and I'm happy to answer your questions or I'll discuss a bit further. Uh, yes, do we have any questions for him? Okay. If there are no questions, I'd request you to please share your email address in the chat box. And if any audience has any questions in future, they can reach out to you. Uh, moving ahead, I'd request Ms. Precious uh, to commence her speech. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity to share today. Um, I'm just going to jump right straight into it. I am in awe of Florescent and the other speakers that have gone before me. Quite insightful and very engaging. Thank you so much. Um, so as we are tackling the issue of success strategies on the workplace. Um, I have a few things that I thought I could share. Um, number one is that we should never stop learning, adopt the attitude that you can never stop learning in a great way to continue to develop your skills and abilities whilst at work. You can have confidence and faith in your ability, but it's important to recognize where your strengths and weaknesses are in order to develop them and maximize your performance. Um, I find that very critical as someone who continuously wants to evolve and grow. It is important to continuously uh, learn new things that um, you didn't know of before. Um, number two is to keep asking questions. When you are in a new position, it is 
expected that you'll be asking questions about your role and responsibilities. However, once you have been in a position for a while or for many years, you may become complacent and stop asking questions. One must find out about different areas of the business or what your two mates are working on doing. This will mean that you are engaged with your colleagues and that you are aware of what is happening in the wider business of things that may not affect your daily responsibilities, but it may come in handy in meetings or team projects if you have a broader knowledge of the business. So this also fits into the teamwork um, ultimately, so that you also remain relevant in what the entire organization is driving across. Number three, talk to your boss. Um, regular one-to-ones are very beneficial. If you are keen to develop yourself professionally, these meetings will not only give you the opportunity to voice any issues or ask your boss questions, but they will also allow you the time to talk through your workload or any progression opportunities that are that you are interested in or that are also even available. And tracking your progress with your manager is a great way to show enthusiasm in your role and to demonstrate to them that you are invested in becoming a better employee. And number four, uh, make friends in the office. Even though making friends in the workplace might not be your first priority, it is a prime opportunity to develop professional and personal relationships with different individuals. You spend the majority of your life in your workplace. So if you find that you ostracize yourself from the rest of the team, you could be missing out on a chance to be happier at work. It's always good to have good and healthy relationships at work. And my first point would be um, have a health work-life balance. Being successful at work doesn't mean being overly invested in work. Work too hard and you are sure to suffer career burnout eventually. Having a health work-life balance is key to being successful and happy at work. Make time for your friends and family and be sure to take those ever important lunch breaks to recharge your batteries and prepare yourself for the afternoon. Having a health work-life balance doesn't mean not working hard. It simply means that you make time for your loved ones and self-care as well. Then my last contribution on this is that have your own voice. If you are looking to get yourself heard, meeting rooms are a great opportunity to showcase your ideas and enthusiasm in front of an audience that matters. A lot of people find it intimidating to speak up to a crowd, but doing this will enable you to showcase your talents and ideas in a productive environment. Not to mention it will impress your boss and members of other teams that are in attendance. Making small changes to your outlook and attitude will amount to big success in the workplace. Pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and putting yourself out there during work hours is a great way to position yourself as a thought leader and enthusiastic employee. Making these changes today will help enable you to make strategic career moves in the future. Um, that's all I have to contribute for today. Um, if there's any questions, please feel free to ask. Do we have any questions? Any questions from the audience? You can raise your hands or write it in the chat box. All right, no worries. Uh, Yes, Mr. Kostman. Yeah, excellent uh, points uh, by Precious. Uh, the only the problem is that uh, in many, at least in our Indian organizations, these are uh, some of the things are difficult to do bottom up, and we do need a top down support as well to enable employers to speak up, uh, be more extrovert, ask questions. People know that, that but uh, sometimes the culture becomes difficult to for youngsters to ask questions when there are the when they well, let me say the atmosphere is a little top down kind of a organization that's what i meant to say and that could be a real challenge 
So like we had in the first lecture, I think that this whole thing has to be also driven top down to encourage people to do what Precious has uh, advised. Thank you. I assume that was a comment. Yes, and uh, yeah, so I'm sorry. Yeah, that was a comment. I'm sorry, that was not a question. I'm sorry for that. So my question is, have you seen uh, situations where uh, the culture is very difficult? And how did you kind of uh, overcome that? Or how would you advise people to overcome that? Um, the thing for me is I believe in the vertical and um, horizontal forms of communication in an organization. And also, again, even in the relationship development aspect. And again, it's also the issue of having those um, informal channels of communication, which can really uh, bring balance to an organization. Um, I think if people, they feel and heard there's that importance of maybe collectively forming a, a, a back end of some sort that is informal, but then making sure that there is a way of conveying that message in respect to the people that are supposed to be there. It is true that sometimes it's difficult to get the messages from the bottom to the top. It's always easier to integrate the information from the top to the bottom. So out, out really, from my experience, it's a matter of engaging people horizontally, um, vertically in the relationship. We need to put emphasis, more in, emphasis in relationship building um, with either our, our bosses or even some of those things that I touched on um, where you are having one-to-one -one relationships with your supervisors and things like that. You easily can pass on those um, the things that are frustrating you in an organization or where you feel like maybe you're not being heard once you have those one-on-ones, as informal as it can be, ultimately a collective of those can actually feed on to something that is more meaningful, that has more impact to, to, to the benefit of the whole organization. So I, I would recommend em greater emphasis on developing those vertical, horizontal relationships actively so, and any informal way of engaging our superiors um, and also the power of collective. Um, collective ideas, collective feedbacks um, that that are based on a consensus that this is how we feel. Um, is there any person we can pass on our information, even if it's coming from the bottom to the top, but it is achievable, it can still be done. But again, all this is really anchored on relationships. So we must be intentional in developing relationships with people that we work with, whether they are our same peers or our superiors. We must be intentional in developing relationships so that it helps in passing on the, the the challenges or the feedbacks that you might have for the benefit of the organization. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, precious. I had a small question for you. Like, uh, since you have been a director of a firm for such a long time in the US, and United States is quite well known for the diversity and inclusion initiatives the government has been enforcing upon all the corporates. What is your perspective on it? Like from a, from the perspective of a human resource professional, how do you see diversity, equity and inclusion aspects impacting the mental health of employees at workplace? I think that um, diversity equity and inclusion they are very key especially even for the future of work why because i i believe in the power of different minds different perceptions um as long as the motive is right um as long as what's being trying to what we are trying to achieve is good um it, it's it's important to be inclusive it's important to hear what um the younger generation the generation z or anyone has to offer. Um, and, and I believe in the power of succession. You know, there is something good about the generation that is older than us, our generation, the generation younger than us. So inclusivity, it means that we are encompassing all of that together collectively for the betterment of the organization. My challenge is when then there are gaps in between where people don't have an appreciation of what the younger generation can bring or the middle generation or what the history of the organization is all about. And then there are all these uh, different views and, and that don't align with the core of the organization. So I feel like a balance of everything 
inclusivity in terms of even disability, gender, age, and all of that, really, when, when it's collective and, and brought together, it, it brings um, a bigger impact to the growth of the organization. And again, at any given stage, um, what people are trying to achieve is, is the growth of the organization, the betterment of the organization. And at some stage, you know, when we are all, all inclusive, all encompassing, we are factoring in the contributions, the positive contributions that each individual parts bring to the holistic growth of the organization. I hope I have tried to answer your question. That's quite interesting perspective, issues. Oh, well, like, would you like to tell us more about your vision and mission regarding vessels of virtue? Like, what do you exactly do? How do you exactly impact the world? Sorry, say that again. Would you like to share with all of us the vision and mission behind vessels of virtue? Uh, for us, we are passionate about holistic empowerment of in individuals, of communities, of corporates, um, for the betterment, for the transformative um, approach of the whole community. So we believe that each person, regardless of who they are, collectively, we can make a positive change to our community. So we drive that through different pillars. We have the technological pillar. We have the food security, we have the health pillar, we have economic empowerment through that to try and achieve that holistic empowerment. And we believe in the collective power of different um, efforts. So that's why I am so much in this aspect of inclusivity and, and equity. Um, but that's what we try to do through, through different pillars. That's quite interesting. Um, I would you. like to request the audience to put forth the questions, if any. You may simply raise your hands and put forward your questions. Do we have any questions in the chat as of yet? Yeah. No questions at all? That's all? Everything was quite clear? Juganshi, any questions? Oops. Okay. So I would like to request you, Precious, if you could just share your email ID in the chat box so that if any of our audience has any questions or seeks further info, they can straight away reach out to you. I would also Thank like you. to request you, Anjali, yeah. if you could share the emails of the previous two speakers. So we have all noticed that network issues have been quite prevalent in today's session. However, normal hai hota hai kya hi kar sakte hai. We cannot help in that aspect. I will be providing you with the emails of the speaker so that if any one of you has any queries, then straight away reach out to them, write out a mail and they'll get back for sure. Now moving further, we conclude tonight's session. We want to extend our heartfelt gratitude to all of our esteemed panelists for your invaluable contributions to the first session of Conference 3.4. Expertise and insights have added value to this event. So being from a different industry, from a different background, from a different specialization, from a different sector again, it actually brings in like different perspectives together on the same topic. That's the reason Anjali and her team works very hard. And cheers to them again, though I do not appreciate their efforts. But still, it's quite a lot of effort that it takes to bring such a big panel together. And Anjali, you really deserve a lot of applause. So we are excited and we obviously value your presence and engagement. It takes a lot of effort to step straight through 1.5 hours and we appreciate your patience too towards learning and development. A sincere appreciation also goes out to all our speakers present here. And we're excited to announce that the second session of this conference will be continued tomorrow from 7 to 8.30 p.m. IST. We look forward to seeing you all there. Till then, do feel free to share your conference experiences by leaving a review on our Google locations. We also encourage you to extend the invitation to your friends, colleagues to join the conference. So do share the conference links with them. And if you are sharing your experience on LinkedIn, do not forget to tag us. Your engagement, inviting friends, and sharing your insights are highly appreciated. Thank you once again, everyone, for being a part of this event. Goodbye. Have a great day ahead and keep dreaming. Thank you.
Anjali ji, I would like to request you to stay back. The rest, you may.